Yep. I know you guys are super excited to say. I can't wait to actually test this out and showcase it. I have only showed a couple people so far. So this is what could potentially be the upgrade to this bottle pro. And I think it's seriously gonna be a game changer, you guys. So if this is the first time that you're joining me for Facebook Live training, I'm Michelle Brewster. I'm the founder and inventor of the Swaddle Pro and the Profitable Studio. And I bring tools and systems to newborn photographers to help them just have a long-term successful career. So that being said, I'm gonna walk you around, show you guys what we're doing first, and then uh, demo the little projects that I've got going on here. So two features today is the Swaddle Pro potential upgrade and the new tabletop that I'm testing out today. Now, I've never used a tabletop before. I've been a beanbag girl the whole time. And I gotta tell you, bending over a beanbag lately is killing my back. So I'm actually really looking forward to testing this out and seeing if it's gonna be my new upgrade to my studio. So to start, we're going to be focusing on four different scenes this time. So this time it's going to be less about the wrapping and the swaddling and more about props and different poses. So the first one, if you want to twist around to here, shine some more light on here. So this is going to be our first of two heart bowl poses. So we're going to do a super subtle neutral scene where it's more about the textures than any colors or anything like that because that's something that a client can put anywhere in their home and it's going to be something that's not going to like clash or whatnot this could be gorgeous anywhere so this one we're going to do some unique lighting with it and i'm going to show you how i do split lighting to create some really beautiful shadows and highlights so this is going to be our very first scene then so the little we have a little boy today and we're showcasing outfits and wraps with this. So the next one of the posed heart shape that we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bowl, slide it underneath our brown fabric, and we're going to be using the fabric to show the imprint of the heart with him in a cute little teddy bear knit outfit in a brown seam. So it's gonna be very simple, very subtle, but it's more gonna be about how adorable he is with a little heart shape around him in a bear knit outfit. Then from there, we're going to take off his bear bonnet and we're gonna flip around to this side. Let me shine some more light over here. Let's see, can you see that okay? Yeah. Okay, so this one is going to be tushy up. So we have always been sticking to lots of wraps and swaddles, obviously, because I'm the inventor of the swaddle pro and I wanna feature it, but I think it's time to do some other fun things. So we're gonna show you how to transition from prop to prop easily and quickly using the Swaddle Pro to start, but then transitioning into some regular poses with outfits and you know whether they're nude or outfit, it doesn't matter, to do bum up, have the leg hanging off, and have a variety within your galleries. Um, from there, we're going to flip over to the tabletop, and then this is where we're going to do another knit blue outfit and we're going to get some maybe huck fin or potentially hand on chin and get some cute scenes to finish up on here. So as always, I have clients send me photos of their home prior to because I wanna design scenes that are gonna be custom to their home so that it looks like it was meant to be in their space. It helps design beautiful artwork for them. It helps up my sales. And it's a great way to be able to make it feel like a really custom thing that I did specifically for them. So, without further ado, we're gonna start with this bottle. So come on a little closer because it's the sound factor that I really want you to hear. Actually, let me shut my heat off so you don't even hear the, the fan. All right, now, we are having crazy wind here today. So you may hear wind um, in the background and you could potentially just hear the fan within my studio lamp. So the design of the Swaddle Pro is exactly the same. The only thing that I've been testing out different options for is where the Velcro features have been. So this is just a test color. It wouldn't be this color. It'd be either white or matching to this. But the biggest thing is it's no longer Velcro. I was able to scour the internet and find fabric that will actually adhere to itself that's completely silent and just as strong. 
So flip this part over. So this is the part that attaches to the back, same exact way that it's always worked. It goes on like so. Look it. And then ready? Biggest thing, Penny? It's silent. So it still gives that nice, strong feel that a baby would not be able to get out of. Same with the bottom here. You can see I'm tugging on that sucker and it's not coming off. So a baby's not gonna be able to do it. And ready? Compared to the Velcro, I am just like blown away. This is gonna be such a game changer. So this is gonna be the first time that I've tested it out. I've done it obviously with the stand-in baby. Um, but I want to be able to move it, do it with a baby that would be moving around and whatnot. And I think it'd be cool for you guys to see it too. So I'm going to try it out in front of you guys. I know the one thing that they said about, um, the fabric itself is if you get lint in it, it will make it a little bit less adhesive. So you, you want to use a lint brush before you put it on the baby each time, just to make sure that it's securely holding in there nice and tight. So flipping cool. I'm super excited about this because now babies aren't going to wake up from that ripping sound of the Velcro and you're not going to sit there having to be like and try and get it off the baby. This latest batch of the Swaddle Pro that's out there right now, I already reduced the size of the Velcro by 50% so that over time as you use it more and more it's going to be less loud and less hard to get off. But this maybe the next step and the final step to making it the ultimate base swaddle possible. So we will test it out on the baby in just a second. And then, stick this over here. So our next piece, um, let's see, what would be the best angle? Maybe you can step on that. <laughs> okay, fine. okay. Yeah. So the next feature is the table, okay? So Janelle, who is the founder of the design for this, is here in the group with us in this Facebook Live. So if you guys have questions, by all means, she can answer them. So make sure you pop in and let her know any questions you might have. So what this is, I'm gonna deconstruct it for a second. So it's a two foot by four foot table. And she has built this super easy mechanism with PVC pipe to attach to the table that you can angle however you'd like. It moves around from these two different sides right here. Perfect for travel photographers who are going to clients' homes because it comes on and off super, super easy and quickly. And you have the ability to be up so that I'm like, I'm gonna use a yoga ball to sit on to be able to pose rather than being on my knees and killing my back on a bean bag. And have that same nice slope that I need, have the same, tight fabric attached to the table and to the PVC and have an easier way for my aging back to not kill anymore. So this is something that I'm gonna be testing out today and seeing if the size of it works great, if the mobility of it and all of that. Um, everything that we're featuring today in the Facebook Live training, you can find the links for in the description if you're in my Facebook group. For Instagram, you should pop over to my Facebook group. But I will also find a way to be able to put it in um, the, actually I'll put it in my bio after the live so that you guys can access all of these different things easily. Swaddle Pro, obviously the link is in there already. The knit outfits that I'm featuring today are, the button for it is in my um, bio and Instagram for the Etsy store. And I'll include this link in there for a little while as well after I test it out here today. Um, as always, whoever is the most engaged is gonna get a prize. And today's prize is a $35 gift card for Etsy. So make sure you guys ask questions like crazy. We have an adorable little boy and he is in his outfits right now and getting his last dose of milk. And then we're gonna get him in the Swaddle Pro and wrapped for the first scene and we're gonna go right in order from there. So I want you guys to let me know if you have questions. Um, the questions I always get that I'll let you guys know right now is what camera I'm using, what lens I'm using, the lighting I'm using. Oh, I feel like there's always one more question that I always get to. The stand. The stand for the light, okay. So my camera is a 5D Mark II. It is an old camera, but it is great and um, it's not broken. 
why fix it? So I'm using that sucker. I always do my newborn sessions with a 50 millimeter 1.2 Canon lens. And I have studio strobe. I'm a studio strobe photographer. I use Pro Photo for my studio strobe brand. I use a three foot by four foot soft box. I do not use a PLM. I find that I get much better directional light that I can control with a soft box. And people always ask me about my stand and it is the Cheetah Pistol Grip. The thing is amazing. On wheels, if you don't have your studio strobe on wheels, you don't know what you're missing. It's awesome. Um, let's see. Okay, so other props today. Let me just give some shout outs. So this heart-shaped bowl, I love it. It's hand carved. This thing is amazing quality. This is New Beginnings Photo. Wait, I wrote it down. Hold on, because I knew I was going to say it wrong. Here it is. New Beginnings Photo Props. You can find them on Etsy and they have unbelievably gorgeous wooden props. They're all handmade, they're all crafted by, so the company is run by parents of an actual newborn photographer, which is really cool because they're actually getting a photographer's input about how their wood props should be made. So make sure you check them out. I'll also drop a link to it in uh, one of the comments afterwards. Um, the what's in it is the newborn cloud that you guys have seen me feature in previous Facebook live trainings this is available in my Etsy storefront these are really great for when you have odd shaped bowls because you can literally turn it into whatever shape you want if it's a trough bowl if it's just round if it's a heart shaped bowl it's really great for all of that um, the cheesecloth wrap from today is also one of mine that you can find in the storefront. These are all my extra long cheesecloth wraps. They're fantastic for having all of those different wrapping techniques because they're super long and you can do some really creative stuff with it. The flocati is a five foot by seven foot. Uh, actually, no, no, I think it's a four by six foot from Loonberry and it's their 3000 gram. So it's nice and fluffy. The bed over here is from Cheekaboo, and the fur inside is also from Loonberry. This is just a piece of fabric wrapped over another pillow to be able to match. And let's see, this backdrop is from um, Photo Prop Floors and Backdrops. It is a fabric um, polyester, and I always buy them extra big so that I can use them as floor and back. And then everything else, so these ones here for the tabletop fabric and what we're doing for the heart-shaped bowl when it goes underneath is literally just fabric from Joanne Fabric. Super stretchy, really soft, um, and just a beautiful color tone with it. And that's pretty much our, oh, I'll give you a little sneak peek of some of the outfits that are gonna be in our RTS event this weekend. And you guys, haven't seen the event we are doing some awesome rts prop events this coming weekend spring colors and these are some of the adorable ones that we're showcasing so we've got a pink little romper for girls this one is so stinking cute look how tiny this is i'm like oh my gosh i can't even remember my kids fitting into these sizes we've got a little gray one and then we'll be showcasing the other ones in there today so, is he all set and comatose? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Let me turn my mask on. Any questions so far come through? Um, asking about how that is attached. Okay. The height and width. Yeah, so the, the height and width of the table, well, the, the height of the table is adjustable. It's a four foot by, by two foot tabletop that folds in half so that like if you're traveling to your client's home, it's got a nice little handle. You can go into your client's home easily, slide it into your car. But the table height, the legs are always adjustable on these type of tables. And Janelle's in here too, so she can totally jump in and talk more about the table. The way that it attaches to the table is through these little rings here on the side. And then it's all pieced together. So you can get this entire system from Janelle within her Etsy store. It's Love Struck Production. You can find the link in the description for this. You can buy it as one set piece and she'll ship it to you with instructions to put it on, or she'll just 
give you a PDF download of how to be able to do it, the length, the sizes, and everything. So she's here to be able to answer questions in the comments, so by all means, jump in. Let me just put hand sanitizer on really quick. How long are your newborn shoots usually? Um, my newborn shoots, I allocate up to three hours, but I usually only need two hours. Swaddle Pro cuts your session time in half. How long did it take you to set up the table? Uh, to build it? I'm gonna have to ask my husband, because I made him do it for me. <laughs> Not long. And the padding on the table? Yes, all it is is folded up pieces of fleece. Lots and lots of fleece. That's it. I always put the last fleece as a bright white so that if I had something that was a little see-through, you wouldn't have a color shift from something other bold color that you have underneath there. All right, where's my swallow? So, since we're doing it on the table this time, Sammy, you can, I don't know, whether you're on this side or that side, mm -hmm. whatever the light would be better for. Okay. One of the other questions I always get during these Facebook Lives is if I don't use a noise machine, and I usually do use a noise machine. I just don't use them for the Facebook Live trainings because I already have the mask on. It's already hard for you guys to hear me, but I usually have a heartbeat going in the background. Do I notice a difference between babies when I use a heartbeat and not? No. So whether it truly works or not, who knows? I want to make sure I get all the lint off. When will these new featured Wow, this is a test. Pros We're going to see if it still works as great as your typical average Velcro. So if it does work, and it's a great option, so let's see, the 16th of this month, we have a two-month-old coming in for a Facebook Live training as well. And I'm featuring, we're also doing, so two new upgrades is going to be the larger size and this quieter adhesive for it. So at the end of the month, after I've tested both of them in front of you guys, we'll potentially do a pre-order sale for it. But I want to make sure that it's absolutely perfect and it's going to work long term for what us newborn photographers need. All right, my dear, if you want to come bring Maverick over here. And how old is Maverick today? Oh, he's two two weeks. All right, so his back is gonna go on that square right there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a cutie! <gasps> oh, nuggets. Oh, he's so cute to color up. All right, so Swaddle Pro, as always, it's gonna stay right below their shoulders. We're gonna do his little hands up. So, I have Teddy bear romper, and then underneath, oh, did we put a blue one underneath? Oh yeah, it is underneath. It's, and then the blue yeah. one is underneath. So we're layering him. It was a little uh, tight on it. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. We want it to be nice and smooth. Okay, okay so I'm gonna wrap around because basically we're doing one wrap this time, and we wanna be able to keep him as undisturbed as possible so that we don't have to keep dressing him, undressing him, dressing him, undressing him. So, got that like that as usual. So no toe peak feature this time because we've got little footy, footies on this romper. Oh, and spit, no. Do you have a brick cloth? And because we're only doing one wrapped portrait, I'm not worried about him overheating because of the two outfits. That's what he's doing. Got his little neck right there. Let's see what that Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> All right. And then, do you mind handing me that cloth right there to wrap this well? Yeah. Perfect. So, as you can see right now, it's the same exact way that it was before. It's awesome. Nice and tight. So, it's looking good so far. Of course you 
Oh, that's okay. They'll be back asleep in like two seconds. <laughs> and because this first one, he's going to be wrapped anyway, even if his eyes are open. Totally fine. All right. So let's see. And he's giving us finger. Perfect. All my babies in my Facebook lives, like, give us the finger during it. I love it. <laughs> so funny. All right, I guess. We're going to go hide the little outfit first. Do you layer so it's easier? Yes. I layer because you can go faster. Nobody wants to be stuck in a warm room for hours on hours especially so if he had a two-year-old sibling in here parents would not want to be dealing with baby waking up baby needing to be fed again two-year-old running all over the place the more that you can utilize your time the better off you are and would you have him naked under the swaddle pro no well i mean you can if you want to if you're worried about like creases from diapers that you don't want to Photoshop off afterwards, by all means, but that's just gonna uh, limit the lifetime expectancy of your Swaddle Pro because you know they're gonna poop in it. And it is just not pleasant for them to be sitting in it. How many wraps do you usually put on if you use a base then a finishing wrap? So the Swaddle Pro would be the base and then I, because I layer a lot, I would probably have two so I can move quickly from the one that they're photographed in into the next one, into the next scene, and then go from there. And it also depends on the pose. So if I'm doing upright potato, I'm gonna have a thicker wrap underneath to be able to create that like round shape. Um, so it really depends on the pose too. And can you wash the Swaddle Pro? Oh yeah. Fully machine washable and dryable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fix his hands when we're over there. Do you have wrapping techniques for boys and girls? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like most of them can translate well on boys and girls. The only one that I don't usually do on boys that much is the bow tie one, because I feel like it's, they say bow tie, but it looks girly to me with all the, bo the bows going all the way down. Um, so I like to keep it simple for boys. Crisscross always is quick and easy for me, and I love the texture that you get from that crisscross shape. As you can see, he's back sound asleep again. So cute. Okay, so what we're gonna do for this one, guys, is we're gonna do a unique lighting on the rip. So Sam, you're probably, so the way, let me show you the way that this lights. Actually, you might be great right there. Okay. So he's just gonna be laying flat in here. Get his little hand the way we want it. Nice and snug. What's the biggest weight the swaddle will hold? Well, you guys, we're testing the new one in two more weeks. So that new one, is so i just had somebody message me yesterday that had a three month old in the current size the next size up is really meant to be that like two to three month old um, i've had babies up to 13 to 15 pounds in the current size Does the new Swaddle Pro go to three months? Yes. Um, oh, those lips, so cute. Do you want to go over washing the Swaddle Pro again? Yeah, it's just regular machine wash. You guys don't have to do anything special with it. So it's made of athletic wear fabric, so it has really nice, um, um, it has really nice stretch to it. It's breathable. It is something that they won't overheat in because it's made literally for athletes. Let me get a little pillow for him. Hold on one second. Is the new one gonna be priced differently? Yes. I don't have any pricing information for either of the new features because I wanna test it first and make sure that it is actually gonna work. And then from there, I will figure out all of that. 
Do you ever use posing beans for this heart bowl? Um, not usually. Here we go. I use posing beans a lot for trough bowl, um, but not really for this one. Here we go. What colors are we dealing with for all of this? Do you know the names? Yeah. Oh, uh, this is the winter white. This is the natural cloud in the natural color. Um, this bowl that I featured a second ago is just their white vintage. And this wrap is just my natural cheesecloth wrap color. Do you know the size of the bowl? Ooh, I do, but I don't know it off the top of my head. That is something I can definitely pop in directly after the live training. Do you ever let your parents pick the props? Uh, I do not. I design it based on their home decor because I get their pictures beforehand. And then if they come in and they see something extra that they want, then we'll add it into it. But I'm the one that usually picks everything. Okay, guys. So what we're going to be doing now is the lighting part to it. And this is the part that I love to create deep shadows and highlights. So because we're working with just um, like creamy tones, we have no bright colors or anything, we're gonna create depth with the light versus the actual color palette. So what I end up doing is taking my light source, putting it by his face, his head side, I'm going to, and this is, so this is one of the reasons why I like working with a softbox rather than a PLM is because I can adjust it up and down where a PLM is so big that you're just kind of dealing with what you got. So I'm going to make it go straight like this. Then we are going to go over here and we're basically going to create almost like a wall of light. So it's going to go way low to the ground. I actually don't even want there to be a gap in between. I'm hitting forward. Even more. So think about if you're doing like a maternity picture against a um, window with soft sheer curtains. This is going to give that effect. So I want to make sure that it's fluffed up so you don't see a hard edge to the light. And then what we're going to do is photograph from, from the shadow side across. So I'm going to twist them a little bit so that I can be at the correct angle. Get this out of my way. Will you add links later to the light stand and stuff? Sure. You're good. You're fine. Nope, you're great. Are you going to show the picture after you take it? Sure. So right now, I know that I have so much light coming from one side, and Pro Photo is a pretty strong studio strobe. So I end up having to keep my ISO at low. And I want blurry, so I'm going to try and get to an aperture that will give me some type of blurred bokeh. However, because I have so much light coming in so closely, I'll probably only be able to get down to like a 4.5. So I'll do a test shot first. Let's see. People keep losing us in the Facebook Live. I don't know if it's their internet or ours. Mm. So we're having crazy wind here today, you guys. Hopefully that's not affecting the internet, but It helps if I turn my slave on. Pretty good. All right, one more quick one, and then I'll show you so far the back of the camera. All right, so it's kind of hard when you face towards it. Oops, hold on. Are you even able to see it? It always, when we try and show the back of the camera, it overexposes it like crazy and live. But you see how you're shooting from the shadow side? Can you switch with me? Can yep. I go over there for Absolutely. a second? Absolutely. Thank you. I want to get to here. You can love your little snoring. So sticky here. I want to be able to see the heart a little, a little bit more on this side to find. Do 
You operate your light in continuous mode as well as flash. No, I only do flash. I exclusively use it as a studio strobe. And is your strobe at the lowest setting? Yes, my strobe, it's at the lowest setting because this particular one is super strong. So I have to always keep it turned down low. All right, so now that I've got the overall picture of this, I'm gonna get up close to get more images for his overall gallery. So now he's got all this cute little hair, those cheeks. So I'll basically just go in nice and close, always focus in on the eyelashes. Are you ever afraid of the Swaddle Pro being too tight? Nope. It's fully adjustable, you guys. You make it how you want it. Oh, it's so cute. It's cheeks, you gotta hold them. Do you manual focus or auto focus? Ah, uh, focus is always auto. But I always shoot in manual mode. He's so cute. Oh, you guys are <laughs> cute babies. So cute. <laughs> I love scenes that are just simple and monochromatic. I just feel like the focus is always on the baby instead of everything else that's going on in the photograph. Okay, so we're already done with our first one from here, you guys. So now what we're doing is taking him out of the wrap, out of the swaddle, and then moving the um, heart shape over to this one. And we're gonna turn him into a teddy bear. He's gonna be so <laughs> cute in this one. All right, let me move the light back first. Do you send your camera in for cleanings and how often? Um, no. <laughs> so the camera is supposed to have the static shock thing when you turn it on and off that it cleans the sensor itself. I've never had an issue with it, so I've never had to. I've had this camera, I can't even tell you how long now, you guys. I think the Canon 5Ds are on to like Mark 6, 7, and this is 2. And this thing is still amazing. How do you wash the wool? Um, so it depends on which wool you guys are asking about. These, I don't even know, dry clean. These are huge. I couldn't even fit this into a machine. Um, the curly wool layers that you can get in my store, those you wash with cold water. I use olive oil soap so that it keeps the curls really defined. And then you just lay flat to dry. Cheesecloth wraps, throw in the wash, throw in the dryer, you're good. Uh, Swaddle Pro, same thing. Knit wraps, hand wash, cold, lay flats dry. How many photos do you end up taking in a session? They feel like they overshoot. Yes. So I gave one of these tips at a previous Facebook Live. You should challenge yourself by getting like two gig cards or four gig cards and being limiting yourself because of how many images you can get on a card. So when I'm in my IPS sessions, that I have one for you guys to be able to see on Thursday, um, I show between 15 and 25 images total. They get to see them in both color and in black and white. So I wanna not shoot 300 images and then cull down to 15 or 25. I'm really, really, specific in me like actually pressing the shutter on my camera. I don't want to spend hours and hours editing images. It's so cute. So see like it's still it's holding on great you guys. It's doing awesome. It looks like it could be the ultimate fix for the loud velcro. Oh you, uh, earlier someone asked how you deal with fussy babies. <laughs> Swallow bro. Yes. <laughs> Can I have you hold him for a second? Though? Works every time. Yeah, Swallow Pro, seriously, it helps soothe babies right away because they get that nice full belly of milk and they get into that womb-like position and they're just out. If they're um, unswaddled and cranky, it's bouncing, shushing, and just kind of like being patient with the baby. A lot of the times we try and get them back to sleep, but the fussier they are for a little bit longer, the harder they conk out, and then the quicker you can get your pictures done. So what we're gonna do here at this point is we're gonna take everything out of the bowl and we're gonna slide the bowl underneath the backdrop.
And so what you end up seeing right now is the elevated bowl, but once he's in it, you can see the definition in the shape like that. So then when we light it from an angle, just like we did over here, it's gonna show those shadows more too. So I'm actually gonna turn it this way because we'll have the light source from that same side. And then I'm just gonna get all of this stuff out of the way quickly so that I have more space to work with. What tape are you using to hold down Gorilla your little thing? Gorilla tape is the only tape I use. That stuff is so strong. And it works amazing. And it's polyester fabric, right? No. Oh. These are, this fabric is from Joanne Fabric. So it's a blend of nylon and something else. It might be a blend of nylon and polyester, but it's really soft and stretchy. It's definitely got a four-way stretch to it. All right. So, let's see. Lighting-wise. Have you ever had to reschedule a shoot because of a fussy baby? I have. Um, maybe only like, gosh, I don't even know, three max in my entire 15 year career because I can still wrap a baby and get an entire session done and look amazing. It makes no difference to parents or to your final sale ultimately if the baby's wrapped or not wrapped. And I even have a lot of times that parents are like, oh, well, I don't really want to put a naked baby picture on my living room wall. I'd rather them in a cute outfit or in a swaddle. So now all I'm going to do just to get the creases out of here is just take this part down now too. Stretch it across. It's gorilla tape. Uh, Cindy said that her husband uses Gorilla Tape on his race car. Holds nice. over 100 miles per hour. I use Gorilla Tape when my kids have been interacting up. Just <laughs> <laughs> you wait, you have a boy on your hands too. You have no idea what you're in for. <laughs> Being a boy mom is interesting and fun at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get the light low. And get our little head on it. There's nothing in the bowl, right? Nothing at all in the bowl. Nope. nope. So between the bonnet and the fabric, that will create the softness for him to be in there. And now, the ultimate test of the loudness of the Swaddle Pro feature. Yeah. All right. So you guys ready? Let's listen. Oh my gosh. Look at it. Love it. I don't know. I think that might be the winner. All right. So Does it now, seem stronger or the same? Um, I would say the way to describe it is it's the same strength if you're pulling it from side to side, but easier when you peel it open, if that makes sense. Alright, so now we're gonna put this little bonnet on him. It's like coming out of that outfit. I know, that's alright. Once I lay him down in there, it'll be perfect for it. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys, so this is the bear romper <laughs> that's available in my storefront. The link for it is in the description. <laughs> How big was he? 8'7". Oh my goodness. He's 8'12 now. <laughs> Somebody likes his food. So as you guys can see, he stayed asleep getting out of the Swaddle Pro. Get underneath the chin. I like tying on the side. How long was he? 21 and a half. 22 and a half now. Wow, he grew that much already? Uh, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, he's very tall. Yeah, he's, he's got a long torso. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Guys. Love it. And I love the little feet in it too. All right. So in the bowl we go.
hardest part, I feel like, is always figuring out what to do with the strings of the bonnet. So, I'm gonna curl them around a bit. What material is the romper? It is, it's knit, it's hand knit. Oh, so sweet. I'm gonna know this hand up like that. Perfect, all right, let's see from the side like that. Oh, I love it. So this time, instead of shooting from the shadow side, I'm gonna be shooting from the highlight side. I'm gonna shut the overhead lights off. <laughs> oh, I can't even. Do you know the size of your fabric? Um, so I always get two yards. Every type of fabric that you get is gonna be a different width. I'm pretty sure that these are 54 inches in width, but it really just depends on the manufacturer for the fabric. I'm gonna shoot this side. Let's see how it looks first. So sweet. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna show you guys a little sneak peek. All right, can you get, you see it from there? Almost. Sort of. Yeah, a little bit. So the, the fabric defines the heart bowl with the weight of him in it. And then when you have your light low and off to a side, that's what will create those shadows and highlights to really show the roundness and the different shape of it. Adjust his face and do one other one. <laughs> oh my god, that one's gonna melt your heart. <laughs> So same concept as the heart bowl being under the fabric. Do you ever use a different prop under the fabric? I mean, you can. You can use, I've seen a lot of people use just the circular bowl. I just think it's so sweet to have a baby in a heart. Like, obviously, it's the love of your life. It's a sweet kind of defining, like, shape to have with a baby in it. Um, I've also seen a lot of people, when they're doing poses on the beanbag, they'll actually use, the uh, like, a dough bowl underneath whether it's a fulcati or something on the bean bag and then pose the baby in a round shape like that. Do you think it would work still if it was a um, patterned fabric? Sure, it's a stretch. All right, mommy, you gonna hold them again for me for a second. And get the light over to the other side. All right, so with this one, I'm gonna show you guys how I like to get them into the position first before I put them into the prop. And if you guys are mothers, then I'm sure you have done the forward burping position on your kiddos. Just back here so it doesn't fall. And so this is the one that I'll actually have you sit next to him for because when he's posed in this way, just to keep him still. Let me just get everything. First. Okay, so same thing with the light. I'm going to go from an angle. So. So with my 
wonderful wheels. It's super easy to just bring my light across the floor and not scratch. Okay, so I am, I'd say it's a little bit more than a 45 degree angle to the bed because I still want highlights and shadows. I don't want just flat, flat light. And I want the back of my backdrop to be a little bit darker to create the kind of like, almost like a tunnel kind of look to the actual finished picture. Then I'm gonna get a test shot before we close this one so the lighting is good. Do you only offer prints? No, I, I do um, prints and digital artwork. My goal for every client is to have a custom piece for their house. So 90% of my clients will do a large wall canvas. Some people will do albums, but in my area, wall art is more of the norm. How many setups do you usually do? Three to five different scenes. Dark. Here. Do you do families as well? I always do families. Our last Facebook live training last week was heavily focused on families, families. So this time we're just focusing on baby. But family portrait is going to always be your money maker shot. Even if they say that they don't want a family picture because they're worried about how they look after having a baby, you never get your beginning again. So having that first family portrait is so, so, so special. And you guys know as family photographers, we can make Photoshop miracles happen in between posing and the lighting that we do, we can still make them feel their best so that they really truly have their like very first beginning together family portrait. Okay, so. And then if you can go on the same side as Sammy over here, so this backdrop wrinkles really easily. I'm gonna hold it while you, I want, it, I want to have you nice and close. You can okay. come right on it and sit right on it. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to get them in the position before they're on the prop, okay? So think forward burping position, right? Let them settle for a sec. He's pretty good. So then what I do is I swoop their feet back just like this. I still have their head secure and their neck secure and then I crisscross their feet. The back foot is what you want to come on top of the front foot. So normally if he wasn't in a romper that had feet you want to be able to see the toes stick out underneath his bum. So now Now we're gonna bring him flat down like this. Get his little head comfy. <laughs> Let him settle. So I always put them in the pose and then keep my hands on them in a position that's gonna keep them supported and feel like they've not just like, you know, like the free fall feel for babies when they just have that startle reflex. So I transition them, hold them, gently rock them, let them settle. I'd say he's settled. Yeah. <laughs> he's what I call a limp noodle. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take his hand, open up his fingers, and slide it up under his chin. And so this is not only gonna be a support for his chin, but it's just gonna give him a nice shape. Just like so. him around so this is where most babies will move a little bit because when you turn their bum so essentially the perfect bum up tushy pose is when their elbow touches their knee it doesn't make a difference in your final sale it doesn't make a difference in the final portrait every baby is going to be different every baby is going to have a different like touchiness to them so when you twist them you want to go slow think of molding baby putty So always just slow movements. And so if he was naked, right now you'd have all those adorable cute rolls going down his back. Now, adjust the pillow 
just a little bit just to make sure it faces up the way I want it to be. Is there something under the pillow? Um, I'll, I'll undo this actually afterwards. It's just basically rolled up fabric, then the fur, and then the pillow. Perfect. Do you ever have your parents support or spot the baby? I do, and that's why mom is sitting right next to him. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. So mom, what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep your hand on him and then we're gonna pull back and forth for the pictures, okay? So I'll say one, two, three, and then you can pull back and forth like that. He's pretty good in his sleep, but it's just I always when they're posed in anything. So you can go ahead and put your hand there now. Oh my gosh, you are so stinking cute, mister. He looks great in every one of these colors so far. So I'm always gonna be focusing on his eyelash. So I'm gonna take a test first, so just keep your hand on him. I wanna make sure his skin is properly exposed with the light. Perfect. One, two, three. Okay, and back. So now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna get a close up, and then I'm gonna hang his little leg down. Go up and get super, super close up so that I can get how chunky their cheeks are in this pose. Okay, you're good, Mom. You can move your hand. Yep. Okay, put your hand back again. Now I'm going to adjust his leg. Have a cute little leg hanging down. You keep white balance on auto, right? I do auto white balance, yep. Do you always do prop shots before the table and bean bag? Um, I do all my wrapped stuff. So I go family. So it starts for me. My typical workflow is mom and baby, family with baby, dad and baby, one scene of the baby wrapped, and then I start unwrapping and doing all the other stuff. All right, so let's get just a bit. How old is he again? Two weeks. He was born on Valentine's Day, right? He was born on Valentine's Day, you guys. Perfect, I'm gonna hand back again. No. So sweet. Can you see him from the front there? Do you have a good view? <laughs> I love it. So now we're already done with this one, you guys, and we're going to be moving over to the tabletop. So he's got his last and final outfit already on underneath this one. So we're just going to peel a layer and then bring him over there to that one. So actually, he's comfy. Will you stay with him like this one second while I bring my light over there? All right, so lighting wise, let's go look at the tabletop. Any other questions coming in while I'm moving the light? How do you prevent your camera from fogging up with the mask oh, on? I, so we, we talked about this at one of the last Facebook Lives, and then I never looked at it again, but um, we were talking about, you know, the scuba mask, the spray stuff? I'm wondering if that would work, because typically it's the same concept. Um, but no, I have not found a way for it to be not, not um, fogged, I wish. <laughs> He's just... <laughs> All right, so he spit up on this in the beginning, so I actually have a lot of fabric in the back, so I'm just gonna flip this really quick so that we don't have to have that spot. <laughs> Sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you wash outfits in? Um, I, so the knit outfits, I'll just use like woolite or some type of like really soft, delicate um, detergent. Um, like I said, the curly wool layers, I use olive oil soap because the olive oil, obviously it has oil in it, so it's going to keep those defined curls and it won't frizz. You really ultimately think of it like human hair when we want to have our curly hair, we'll use a defrizzer and the olive oil soap is great for that. Do you ever put a bean bag on top of the table? Nope. 
Do you still use a heater when you layer this way with clothing yeah, so and I still, wraps? Actually, so that my wall mount heat is off right now, but my baseboard heat is still set on 70. So it's not like, it's not ridiculously hot in here. I'm not sweating, but at the same time, he's comfy and cozy. Normally, if he was completely naked for this, I would have it way hotter in here than I do right now. I'm thankful it's not. <laughs> thankfully, yes. <laughs> All right, so there's the spit up. All right, we're good. That's perfect. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> He's already, well, actually, I'm going to get that outfit on off of him anyway, so he'll be moved. So in next week's Facebook Live training, we have Courtney Harvey um, joining us, and she is a graphic designer, brand strategist, website crazy guru, She's going to be helping us with business strategy. The week after that is when I have our two-month-old baby coming in to test out the larger size of the Swaddle Pro. Then we're doing a maternity session, you guys. We haven't done a maternity session yet. So even though my Facebook group is Newborn Photography Success, obviously we're dealing with pregnant mamas too. So we're going to do some studio maternity. And then we end with a little girl with another newborn session. So, do you give out a guide before your sessions? I do. I have a welcome guide. My welcome guide lets them know what they need to wear, how old the baby should be, what it's going to be like when they first arrive, all kinds of details. Do you ever do in-home sessions? Um, I do not, but my wonderful Sammy that's behind the cameras right now <laughs> is going to be doing them with me. Mew. <laughs> So this is my super handy dandy cart that has everything I need for when I'm doing tabletop poses. I've got my beans for posing. Where are my beans for posing? In a pot right now? We bet they're in a prop. Let me go get them. Well, rolled up fabric. Hang on. Is there anything in the back of the table in case they roll? Uh, there's two foot of, of length behind there. So they're not gonna roll. And you always have a spotter. Always, always, always. So it goes, I'll show you where the table ends. It's way back here, you guys. That baby's not going anywhere. The table is adjustable. The table is fully adjustable. Height wise, not length wise. So I'm going to get the hands under the chin pose prepped. So I'm going to take a fabric and layer it up to have a hump right here. I'm going to go underneath some of my fabric, some of my fleece, I should say, until I get a nice defined lift. So it's hard to see because the fabric is so clipped on tight, but once the baby's on it, you can kind of see that nice roundness here for the baby to lay like this. And then, once I know I've got enough underneath here, I'm probably gonna put one more clip here in the front to just hold the fabric like that too. So now I'm gonna get a test shot really quick, make sure lighting is good before I move him. I pretty much get everything ready to go and then get the baby over. What's the feeding situation for the baby? They, uh, they arrive and feed the baby right away. Get them into that nice deep milk coma and then game on. And they're usually set for the whole session? It depends on the baby. 
you know, sometimes if you get a colicky baby in here and they need multiple feedings, it just kind of is what it is. It's just like when you think of your pregnancy, no pregnancies are the same. Even your, like, your own pregnancies from child to child can be completely different. And so it's the same thing with newborns that come in for newborn sessions. All right, I'm gonna get a chair for you over here, Mom. Still here. Still here. <laughs> I'm gonna take the heart out because I keep. Okay, sure. And then you can just maneuver around. This is gonna be it. I kind of set this up in a corner so it's super tight. But uh, once I'm sitting, I think you should be able to get over my shoulders. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. Perfect. All right. So I, the way that I have the chair over there for you, you're going to have to kind of sit with your legs this way and then face in the other direction. But you'll be comfy at least. You won't have to sit on the floor. All right. Do you prefer the, that the baby is fed right when they arrive at the studio or home? No. Studio. Always. All right, so we're gonna get his little outfit off first. So another great thing about having a yoga ball in your studio, so Anna Brandt does this like crazy, she did it when she was here for her workshop, is if they're fussy and they need to be balanced, they might. So you know how like you can tell, they can tell the difference between when you're sitting and bouncing and you're standing and bouncing. Yeah. If you have a yoga ball and you do it like this and you're exhausted and you don't wanna stand, it works amazing. Do you ever do the froggy pose? I do. Yep, but we're not going to be doing the froggy pose today. To avoid shadows, is it just the placement of the lighting on the table? I like shadows. So 45 degree is going to give you shadows. I like having shadows because then you get to see the roundness of their cheeks, like the roundness and plumpness of their lips. It's just a better way to see their features. Now, I don't, I'm not, I don't necessarily consider myself like a dark and moody style photographer, but I do like to have highlights and shadows. I don't like just flat light. But that's just my own style. <laughs> so cute. Oh no, sorry, I'm just driving you. Let's get this little button together. So this other little romper. So when you're using this bottle pro, you guys, if you want an outfit underneath, and you want to still be able to use that toe peep feature, use a romper like this second one that you're going to see in a second that doesn't have any legs so that you can still access their toes to do the wrap techniques that's going to be able to showcase all their little features. Do you do a lot of editing? Do I do a lot of editing? Um, I, for the past 10 years, have somebody do my standard enhancements and then I do my more artistic enhancements. I know that my time is more valuable than sitting behind a computer editing all day when I can be marketing my business. So I have somebody edit for me and then I do all the creative, pretty fun stuff to take the images to the next level. Did you make the romper? Yep, all of these are available in my Etsy storefront. Do you have a video of all of your wraps? Oh, I don't have a video, they're in my storefront. <laughs> all right, buddy, get this on first. Do you edit everything or do you have them choose? Oh no, they come in, so I am an IPS photographer, so they come in to see all of their images two weeks after their session. At that point, everything is fully enhanced because they're only seeing between 15 and 25 images. Now you guys have seen, I've probably taken maybe four images of each scene, maybe a little bit more if I'm doing close-ups and further away, but I don't overshoot. And I fully enhance everything. So when they're coming back in to see, they're just really getting the best of the best and they get to see how amazing everything came out. Oh, they meant video on how to wrap. Oh yes, I have wrapping tutorials available. I can pop in the link um, after this is over. I have six adorable wrapping tutorials. All right, so now it's very similar to what we just did on the bed, the forward burping position, 
and then getting them and transferring them over there. So I'm gonna slowly get him up. Forward burping position. Give him a second to settle. Get those legs behind. And then I'm gonna start. Can you swoop over this side for a second? So you can see how I position his arms. So, I know, I'm sorry, I'm super, <laughs> super cramped the way I set this up. So he's in forward burping position, his legs are crossed in womb-like position, so he's just comfy like this. Now I'm gonna slowly bring his hands up. I wanna get him as close to that pose as I can before I get him on the table so that he's just comfy, out, and good to go. So we're gonna go one hand, two hands, let him settle again for a second. <laughs> And then we're going to transfer him. <laughs> Let him settle for a sec. Keep the hands on him always. I like to let them get comfy for a minute before I start moving them around. And I swear half the time when they're just moving to get comfy, they put themselves in a better pose. <laughs> Hands on under and in even further, like so. And we're gonna start adjusting his head a bit more. So basically, before you could see a lot of his face was in shadow, and by just simply moving his head back a bit, you're getting better lighting on his face, and you're getting what's called butterfly loop underneath there. Let's let him settle for a sec. His head up again. Put his hands underneath. His chin this way. Let him settle. So even from here, what I would do, additional little pieces of fabric that I'm gonna put underneath to lift his head up a little bit more. I'm gonna still keep him pretty low like this because the angle that I'm gonna do is his face and then blur it all in the background. So I'm gonna get nice and low and then have it blurred. But I want him up just a little bit more for this first shot. Find all the crazy layers. See how that slowly starts bringing his head up into a better position for the light and for the angle. Um, people are asking where you're located and if you do in-person training. I'm located in New Hampshire on the seacoast of New Hampshire in Portsmouth, and I do do trainings. Um, I do two-day intensive workshops. I haven't started them back up just yet because of COVID. Um, so probably this summer is when they'll start back up again. And they're group trainings, and they're a blast, and you guys are exhausted afterwards. <laughs> I work it to the bone. Okay, so I'm just gonna get fingers uncurled so I can see them. Good. One of the other th great things about having your lights on wheels is it's so easy to maneuver it all. All right, I don't even think I need to clip this fabric anymore. So I already got my lighting beforehand. I'll still take one test shot just to see if I need to adjust anything from there. I think I'll still be pretty good here. Oh yeah. I'm gonna bring this around just a little bit more. There we go. Boy, I think he's gonna smile. <laughs> Whenever they do those like rolling eyes, oh, no. they usually <laughs> smile. Oh. 
All right, I'm loving the tabletop so far, you guys. I'd be breaking my back right now. Doing close up, further away. All right, can you guys see? <laughs> so sweet. All right, so I'm gonna adjust the space just a little bit more. Do one other one from here and then I'm gonna flip them and we'll do another one. So for this one, I'm gonna extend his legs. So we can see more of his feet coming up the side. We got some tootin'. <laughs> tootin', tootin'. There we go, buddy. Get comfy. So whenever you guys are working with babies, the key is just being slow and patient. So one of the cue points to let go is of course, babies always have such a tight grip. You can see his fingertips are still kind of white, like he's gripping onto me really tightly. The second he relaxes and they just go back to their normal, like non-gripping color, that's your cue to slowly let go. Other than that, if you let go too soon, you just lose the shot. Now, it's pretty relaxed. Oh, get one finger up first. <laughs> you got something going on in there. There we go. We're ready to do a big one on camera, Mom. <laughs> oh my God. So a lot of the times when they slip back down, what I'll do is I'll grab underneath here, hold their head, grab the other side with my other part of my hand, and then I just quickly lift them up and pull them forward. Now we can get that better hands-on chin. Maneuver my fabric around. It's almost why I kind of prefer fabric than some of the posers is because you can literally shape it into whatever shape you want. So now I can see all of his little fingers. I can see the roundness of his cheeks. And I've got an adorable little pose that this is gonna be in focus, blurred in the background. It will be good. <laughs> this little side grip there smile. He'll let us flip him over on his back and we'll do one without the bonnet so that mom can see all this hair and his adorable <laughs> pictures. And then we'll be all done, you guys. When do you know to move on from a pose if it's not working for you? 
Uh, you know, I mean, I feel like if the baby is fussing and unhappy, then just move on. You know, if, if the baby is kind of like tense in it, it's gonna look tense in the final photograph. So it's really just like, you know when a baby looks more natural. If it doesn't seem to be working, but the parents really love the shot, like every once in a while, I'll get parents that really, really want the froggy pose and the baby is just not having it. And I just have to tell them, I'm sorry, but their child does not want to do this pose and I cannot force them to do it. He's got like the perfect amount of hair. Right. When my youngest was born, he had like three inches on one side, half an inch on the other side, and like three times the amount of hair. It was crazy. Oh, I was shocked so that he had like hair at all. Yeah? Yeah. Just made my husband look a little bald. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're gonna flip him. And let's see. So I'm gonna keep him in the pose I want, sort of, and move the fabric pieces underneath with my hand to position him. <laughs> so with the huck fin pose we're so tight. <laughs> All right. Diaper. Crisscross his legs. Flip back a bit. <laughs> oh, do you want to bring in, do you have this little name or the thing that you want to photograph with? This might be a cute one for that. When you guys get the fabric positioned properly for his feet, see how they naturally stay up like that? Otherwise, they're just going to flop back over if you don't have that support that's curling his bum up.
without it to know that we've got the pose for you and then we'll stick it back in there. stay pretty low for this, so I'm not even going to be on the yoga ball. He's laying like this, you guys. Got the tabletop. You can stand up and photograph down his face this way. His little pouts that he's doing are adorable. eyes open. Mm -hmm. Coming in? Not really. Okay. All right, you guys, this will be my last one, and then we'll say goodbye for the training. What age span is your newborns? Well, I've done newborns up to two months old with the Swaddle Pro. So I'm not as concerned as I used to be getting that two week age deadline from before. This 
come back to you guys. All right, you guys, so we're done for our live training. I'm gonna pop in when I'm finished here with the rest of the pictures to let you guys know who was the winner of the Etsy gift card. And I'll answer any questions that you guys have put in there that you need links for, but don't forget you can find some of the links in the description. And I hope you guys enjoyed this and stay tuned until next week. Bye.